Hi! <laughs> Welcome to an adventure. Uh, I'm Anthony Wright Day Hernandez, community collector here at Virginia Tech. And also, um, you may know me on the internet as Reverend27. This is Archival Adventures, the weekly show that we do uh, here on um, twitch.tv slash VTUL Studios, as well as twitch.tv slash Reverend27, sharing materials from special collections and university archives at Virginia Tech. Um, today, I have a guest host. Um, <laughs> Archivist <laughs> Kira is here with me. Uh, you wanna... Arch Archivist Kira was apparently trying to create a feedback loop, which I have now fixed. <laughs> Oh, oh, I was producing oh, extra audio. I thought I heard yeah. something, but... We are completely have it together today, as we often do when I am asked to appear on this show. Uh, Hi, all! <laughs> yeah. Archivist Kira is, um, though she doesn't want to admit it, my boss, and also... <laughs> am not. Not true. I mean, technically, I don't report directly to her, Correct. But <laughs> she is the assistant director of Special Collections and University Archives here at Virginia Tech. Um, she is one of my mentors. She is an expert uh, on our food and drink history yes. collection, as well as our cocktail history collection, um, and is just an all-around sort of guru expert of uh, archival practice. So Aww. if you have any questions regarding um, anything archives, definitely throw them in chat, and uh, you can you can ask her instead of. Um, uh, you know the regular me. Yeah, um, I mean I'm, and, I'm on all the channels today. And um, <laughs> yeah, so today we're going to be looking at frosted sandwiches. Well, we're going to get to frosted sandwiches. We're going to start somewhere else. We got to oh. build up to the frosted sandwich. Can you tell us the approximate year we are heading to first? Well, depending on where we start, we're going to start like late 19th, early 20th century when we talk about sandwiches. Sandwiches are older than that, but I'm not getting into the whole, we don't have time for the whole history of sandwiches. We're getting into some of the basics in order to build up to the frosted sandwich, which is the nightmare appearance that arrives uh, like circa 1920s maybe, were some of the ones we're going to look at today. I've got, but like 1920s all the way up into the 1970s. Wait, the frosted sandwich started in the 20s? I think some of the ones I have with for us to look at today are like 20s, 30s. Yeah. Well. We got to get there. First, we got to talk about. Isn't that, like, 1920s is, is like Edwardian era, right? No. Technically, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> that makes me less surprised or surprised at the um, frosted sandwich. Anyway. I mean, to be fair, Kayla, I was not brought here to do a le lecture <laughs> so, hi, Kate. It is great to see you. Um, welcome, everybody. Keysbird, thank you so much for the resubscription on the Rogan27 channel. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, before we dive into, bite into, before we bite into, bite into. Um, our topic today, uh, just a quick reminder, check in, um, Virginia Tech acknowledges that we live and work on the Tutelo and Monica people's homeland, and we recognize their continued relationships with their lands and waterways. We further acknowledge that the Morrill Land Grant College Act of 1862 enabled the Commonwealth of Virginia to finance and found Virginia Tech through the forced removal of Native nations uh, from their lands in Western territories. We understand that honoring Native peoples without explicit material commitments falls short of our institutional responsibilities through sustained, transparent, and meaningful engagement with the Tudelo and Monica peoples and other Native nations, we commit to changing the trajectory of Virginia Tech's history by increasing Indigenous student, staff, and faculty recruitment and retention, diversifying course offerings, and meeting the grow growing needs of all Virginia tribes and supporting their sovereignty. Virginia Tech acknowledges that its Blacksburg campus sits partly on land that was previously the site of the Smithfield and Solitude plantations, owned by members of the Preston family. Between the 1770s and the 1860s, the Prestons and other local white families that owned parcels of what became Virginia Tech also owned hun uh, hundreds of enslaved people. <clears throat> we acknowledge that enslaved black people generated wealth that financed the predecessor institution to Virginia Tech, the Preston and Olin Institute. And they also worked on construction of its building. Not until 1953, however, was the first black student permitted to enroll. 
through inclusive VT, the institutional and individual commitment to ProSim that I may serve. In the spirit of community, diversity, and excellence, we commit to advancing a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive community. I have been notified. My audio is cutting in and out. I'm going to attempt to move my microphone closer and see if that helps. Um, yeah, thank you for notifying us of the um, audio issue. Uh, I mean, the scene we were just on, I don't think they could hear you at all. No, but it was before, so I am I officially... I put it on the one with just me instead of... I am officially checking on my audio status to see if that's better, because we were fighting fans and things like that, but we'll see if this is better. It might be that we just need to get a different microphone in your lab. Uh, is, is the audio better? Oh, it sounds better. Okay. Excellent. What's up? Ravenlock, thank you, uh, thank you, and hello. Okay. Uh, we should talk about sandwiches. That's what I came here for. Yeah. That's you, what I was hired for. No, that's not what I was hired for. Do you want to show some on screen while we talk about them? Well, before some we get things. to it, we are going to build up. To, we are going to build. No, we don't have any sandwiches. I did have a sandwich for lunch, but I thought I would eat it instead of bringing it the to the show. The only sandwiches that I had for lunch were Oreo cookies. I mean, if you're going to. See, I don't know if we have time to get into the whole what constitutes a sandwich. We're roll? gonna we're gonna touch on the cube roll, I'm we, sure, at some point. We could we could bring up the cube roll if you wanted to. If you're not familiar and you want some Oh, uh, I can bring it up on screen. If alternative you want. reading while well, no, because then we're gonna end up on the cube roll all day. Okay. I'm sharing it in <laughs> chat for now. Perhaps we'll bring it up. But if you'd like some simultaneous uh, reading while we're talking about sandwiches, uh, the Cube Rule is an interesting website that discusses what constitutes a cube, what constitutes uh, different types of food, including a sandwich. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, let we me. Might, we might come and look at it later, but I want to show people some of our stuff first. Okay. Well. Ta-da! <laughs> Why not start with sandwich? <clears throat> um, I always forget there's a delay. Whenever I come on the stream, I forget that I have to patient and do things. All right, everybody. These are secrets. Don't tell Don't anyone. Tell. Don't tell. Okay, I'm cutting in and out again. Ah. Um. I don't know. Maybe there are other microphones. Okay, do you want to try? Plugging a different one into your pack. They're on the, on the desk over there. Okay. Please, <laughs> please stand by. Please stand by. Um, you can look at that item oh, while wow. I. Oh wow! Yeah, that's wrong. I will fix. Um, I will fix the finding aid thing. Uh, and um, yeah, give us just one, one quick moment. See if this one works better. Okay. Hey, we got the microphone situation sorted, and I am addressing the Mubot issue. Okay, so I have a new microphone. I'm going to ramble for a minute while we see if this one's working better for people. Dun dun dun. Um, yeah, as as uh, as Anthony said, sandwich secrets. So I am letting you all in on some secrets. Don't blab them to everybody. I mean. They're probably not secrets anymore. Keep them secret. Keep yeah, them keep them safe. Specifically, we're going to look at secrets from bakers of butternut bread. Where's the center? It's over there. I didn't have a finding aid to share for this week. That's why the new bot. Oh, be. that's why the command doesn't work. Broken. Um, we are going to look at a few items from one manuscript collection, but um, and I can find the finding aid for that at some point. But we may not, the command may not be doing what it's supposed to today. 
Dun dun dun. You can. You can. Okay. Go. Oh, I'm, ass- I'm keeping. I'm assuming my audio is going okay because no one has told me now that I'm cutting out again. Yeah. Which either means people can't hear me at all and they're not telling me, or. <laughs> Okay, audio yeah. smoother for sure. Thank She's you. Squared, it, it, uh, the announcement posted to the other channel too, um, and it was the same wrong announcement, the one for two weeks from now. Um, there you go, concerning the Earl of Sandwich. They have a whole history of, of, of sandwiches um, and the story behind it. But again, we're digging into more recent sandwiches. Biting into, snapping into, chomping into, what's the right verb? Um, so, sandwiches. We can spread it around to all the verbs. Yes. Don't worry, we're going to butter every one out. Okay. Welcome to just be Funs for an Hour and a Half. Um, so this book is from, or this pamphlet rather, is from Butternut, which was a bread bakery in Portland, Oregon. Um, I believe this is from about, let's see if I can find a date on this, about 1930. So we're going to bounce around a little bit. I have not organized things chronologically. Um, even though this is from Portland, Oregon, hey, pimento sandwiches, for those of us in the South, not an unfamiliar product. Um, we're going to start on this side, though, because I love that we have sandwich suggestions, so some fun things to keep in mind as we talk sandwiches for the next hour plus. Um, there was an old practice in the early part of the 20th century, late 19th century, early 20th century, um, that you would always butter the bread for your sandwiches, regardless of what filling was going in there. Always butter them. Um, that sounds normal. I've, I have encountered this. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> I, didn't always, I didn't do this growing up, but like in learning about food history, I've learned a lot about this. Um, part of it is keeping your bread moist. Part of it is keeping wet fillings separated from your bread so that things don't get soggy. So it's if you're like, putting tomatoes in it's there. It's like spreading apricot preserves on a pie crust. Yeah. Um, don't use melted butter because you don't want to add liquid butter. Then it's just going to defeat the whole purpose. Um, you can make a sandwich butter, as they suggest here. So not just regular old butter. Why not take your butter and add some whipped cream and salt and mustard? <laughs> okay, I'm okay. getting a face. Yep. Um, if you're going to make fancy sandwiches, you know, you want to take the crust off before you cut your sandwiches into fancy little shapes. You can cook the cutters. Lots of fun with that. Um, you can keep your sandwiches moist, which again, we just talked about how we want to keep moist fillings from dry bread, but then you can keep your sandwiches moist by wrapping them in a damp napkin. If you're going on Whipped cream and mustard, I, am, I completely agree. Key squared, I'm, I'm, I'm like, wait, what now? Uh, we're putting what in there? Um, <laughs> it seems to me that whipped heavy cream, because that's what we're talking about here. We're not talking about sweetened whipped cream. We are talking about whipped heavy cream. Still seems like an odd thing. But we're not going to escape whipped products going on sandwiches today. That's kind of our running theme. Um, also, fruit sandwiches should be prepared, prepared immediately before serving, so you don't want to let those sit around. So, sandwich suggestions, not secrets, although the pamphlet is about secrets. Um, so, like, you know, your standard sandwich, bread on both sides, filling in the middle. We've got a three three layer sandwich here, so we're talking about um, a little bit more Taking an entire loaf of bread, cutting it the long way, and then of course we're going to spread butter on it because we just talked about why we're going to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, do you, and, you leave the crusts on? Uh, in the long, like a sandwich like this where you're cutting like the long way through a loaf, yes, you probably are. It's not a hundred percent sure. In this one, they don't say anything about cutting. Oh no, they do say remove the crust in this one. So they're making. They're taking the crust off. So if you're not a crust fan, the crust you should have made a poll about whether or not sides of the people lip. like <laughs> people are into crust or no crust. That should that should have been like a whole discussion. Um, it, for me, it depends on the bread as to whether or not whether or not I want the crust attached to it. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Key Squared is hoarding their heavy cream. Mm. I didn't say you had to whip mm, it to songs. make a sandwich. Um, so in this case, we've got a lovely little three-layered, long, like, entire, like, loaf of sandwich. We're cutting the whole the whole crust off, mm-hmm. cutting it the long way, and we're going to fill it with some stuff. Uh, in this case, they're doing a chicken filling and a nut filling. Sure. 
Uh huh. Which is the whole production because you gotta crush up the nuts and you gotta add them to mayonnaise dressing. <laughs> I love the facial expressions I'm getting here. I'm attempting to. Mm hmm. Understand why anybody would want those flavors. And then you're gonna throw lettuce in the mix. Classic sandwich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. And then let's see. We've got a lot of classics. There's, I mean, we I could talk for I've hours. I've never done like a peanut butter and chicken sandwich. No, I, I haven't either. But it doesn't have to be peanut. You could, in theory, do I know, but like nuts, walnuts, or pecans, which often go in a chicken salad sandwich. But any nut, nut butter with chicken, I can't, I can't imagine that being terribly good. And so, when it talks about nuts and chicken together, I'm very confused. So things we're gonna see a lot of today. Olives. Olives are good. Dates. I'm less familiar with dates, but they um, seem okay. Eggs. Chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, cucumbers. Different cucumbers. different dressings and mayonnaises. So we're seeing a lot of that, that on here already, <laughs> but what I'm telling you is we're gonna see a lot more of that before we get far. So again, this is just uh, our secrets from Butternut of some different things. Uh, we're also gonna see some theme stuff. So we have Cupid sandwiches. Uh, so you can make heart-shaped little sandwiches with cottage cheese. With a cookie cutter. That's been made pink with currant juice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Little cutesy little heart sandwiches. I, currant juice would be hard to find in the U.S., I would think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe cranberry juice? Maybe. Um, hey, sandwiches are a great thing to have on a date. I'm less sure about hang, having a date on a sandwich, but I'm yeah. open to being convinced. I'm with you there, Key Squared. Uh, chat's on hold. <clears throat> uh, we've got polka dot sandwiches, so if you, uh, you know, want to have some, uh, you can put pimento cheese on some bread and like squish the pimento into the bread so it creates, I mean. Sure. Sure. We have your very classic cucumber sandwich, right? Mm -hmm. So thin cucumbers with some sort of dressing, dry them out, stick them on some Ooh. nice little sandwiches. Cayenne pepper. Yeah, that sounds really and good. Olive oil. No mint leaves. No mint leaves. Just olive oil and lemon and salt and cayenne. Interesting. Because mm -hmm. it was my understanding that cucumber sandwiches traditionally have mint. Not these. Nice. I like these royal sandwiches with carrot and chive and curry powdered mayonnaise. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, some of these flavor combinations are just taking me a second to parse. Sometimes uh, your uh, cookie cutter shapes are for themed reasons. We had Cupid, we've got diamond sandwiches for card parties. Interesting. Uh, Key Squared says uh, yes, they've crest. always used purslane or parsley. Or watercress. Or cress yep. on cucumber. There are many options. Uh, we could just do onion sandwiches. That's, I, I like, I like the options for cucumber sandwiches because I like cucumber sandwiches, but I developed an allergy to mint. So now I have alternatives. There you go. We've got nut and cheese. We're going to see a lot of nut and cheese. We got some onion sandwiches, just straight up onion. I have seen that. Yeah. Yeah. What are Bermuda onions? Bermuda no. onions are sweet onions. Okay. So, so like a like Vidalia a, or something? Yeah, but slightly different. Uh, some tongue, we'll probably just see a lot of tongue. Mm -hmm. I like these sharp ones. I don't think you're, sharp. You're looking at this side? Well, I was looking at that side. I'm kind of, oh. I was like looking at yeah, tongue. Yeah, because that side has not been on camera. Yeah, I will move it over that way. <laughs> I know, it's this is a very long pamphlet. I picked a bad one. I, well, I can zoom out, but I think this is a good, we just need to make sure that it's centered. Oh, this one's got onion juice in it which is like when you grate an onion, it creates a lot of juice in the process and you capture that. Sandwiches. Toss parsley in onion Green juice. Sprinkle on very thin, evenly buttered slices of butternut bread. Yeah. So it's just parsley and onion juice. Yes. It's exactly on, on buttered bread. But buttered bread, yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's all it is. It's a parsley sandwich. Uh, I'm gonna point out this holiday sandwich grind cold boiled ham in food chopper mm. add peanut butter mm. minced sweet pickle and mayonnaise <laughs> think about that one for a minute peanut butter and sweet pickle i can uh, that was actually 
pretty common. I, peanut butter and dill pickle, even. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm familiar with. Ham and pickle, okay. The peanut ham butter, ham, and, and pickle. Peanut butter, <laughs> I can see. It just is not something that my brain immediately would come up with. That's an excellent question, Shadows. I don't know what holiday this is for. I don't know what you want to celebrate with boiled ham, <laughs> peanut butter, mixed pickles. Now, if I were to think about this from my family's history and that way we have celebrated holidays, ham would normally be like an Easter thing, but I don't imagine I would be eating these at Easter. I would, I would think ham and peanut butter and pickles Maybe would be Christmas? a wintertime yeah. thing. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> because it's cold boiled ham, which could have been. That is an excellent point, Key Squared. It could jar. be a holiday in the British sense, meaning something you would take on a picnic. Ah. Not a British that. company, this company, but that could very much be one of the. That could be a good thought. Um, so, as a precursor to frosted sandwiches, there's also something called a ribbon sandwich that we're going to see several times which again is when you take an entire loaf of bread and you cut it the long way, mm -hmm. or you can do it on individual slices, um, often with alternated slices of different kinds of bread. So there's a color, different colors, and then you cut them into little fingers. And we'll see some pictures of some ribbon sandwiches later. Um, and then so you cut them into essentially what are little rectangular squares, AKA fingers, ah. and you have different fillings. And we'll see some examples. I have pictures of some of those later, but I want, that's sort of like a step between the regular sandwich and the loaf sandwich. The, the ribbon and the ro loaf sandwich are like the steps to the frosted sandwich. And so I'm, if I'm correctly uh, following your description, it sounds to me like they took layer cake techniques and applied them to savory Correct. applications. That's very much what it is. And then they cut it down into small little finger rectangles, like ribbons. Uh, so we're going to see some more ribbon sandwiches along the way. Bean um, sandwich? Bean sandwiches, yeah. Mash one cupful of cold baked beans to a paste. Mm -hmm. Season with made mustard or finely chopped celery. Spread on thin buttered slices of butternut bread. I mean, that sounds very British to me. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a breakfast sandwich to me, uh, if you think British. You could have some prunes and powdered Baked sugar. Baked beans are a, a very typical British breakfast item. Yeah. You could have some prunes and powdered sugar. Mmm, yum. <laughs> we passed fig sandwiches. Oh yeah, we had fig <clears throat> and raisin. A lot of fruit fillings. Chop, kind, uh, chop fine one cup of figs. Cook to a paste with a half a cupful of hot water. Add one teaspoonful of lemon juice. Set away to cool. Spread on thin slices of butternut bread. Dust with finely chopped nuts and press together in pairs. Interesting, they don't tell you to use buttered bread on this sandwich. They don't, but they've already told us that we should do that all the time. So they were um, not specific this time. But just, I suppose because you've essentially made a fig butter. Yeah, you're basically making like apple butter, but with figs. So apple butter being something most people are, are at least familiar with or have heard of. Yeah. So this is fig butter. Uh, oh. Let's see, what do we have here? We've toasted got- Toasted cheese. Toasted Yay. cheese, yes. And they say to use American cheese. They do. And we're gonna look at some craft stuff in a little bit and we will talk about American cheese and cheeses. Uh, we got some raw beef and then some cooked chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and some I mean, hot sardines. Raw beef is part of many cuisines. They, you do cook it because then it's toasted. You put it on the bread and then you toast it. Mm. So it's just you start with it raw. Uh, raspberries, I mean we got every fruit you could think of over here. Yeah. We got, we got raspberries, we got bananas, we got maraschino cherries. Strawberry sandwiches. We got bacon. Bacon sandwich! Bacon sandwich. Where? Over Bacon. here. I'm moving back this way. Sorry, it was behind nope. your head up there. It was behind my head. Spread butternut bread with slices of bacon. You guessed it. Wait, how do you spread bacon? You just lay it across there. Okay. Spread it out. My brain... I er mean, I know, they use the verb as if your bacon was somehow spreadable. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Spread butternut bread with slices of bacon cooked in frying pan. On another slice of bread, place a layer of cheese covered with sliced pickles. 
Mm -hmm. Press two pieces of bread together, cut diagonally and toast. I honestly Squash. thought a bacon sandwich was just bacon on bread. It never occurred to me that there would be cheese and pickles. I have, uh, I have come across in my playing around with our collection and working with this collection for some time, like five different variations on a lettuce sandwich. You would not think there would be that much to discuss in a lettuce sandwich, but you might be surprised. I, I've actually been to a, an entire restaurant that served, um, instead of hamburgers, they were, it was all sausage, but they were presented and looked like hamburgers, but it was all sausage. And I had never, that, that was another like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you can do different things with the same essential ingredient. And it never occurred to me. So this is, this like cheese and pickles, and bacon is like if you took the hamburger patty out and just subbed in bacon instead, mm -hmm. it's a bacon sandwich. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And then we've got some fancy canapes at the end where we're cutting our bread into little circles with cookie cutters. Mm. Oyster uh, canapes. So we're going to use biscuit cutters or cookie cutters to make nice little rounds. All and then, And then we're going to make tiny little bite-sized niblets. Uh, not sandwiches, technically, so I guess we should skip this page, but, you know. I just haven't, I haven't paid any attention to the illustrations, and I, like... Do you not I, cook your sandwiches over a stick, with a stick over an open flame? Generally <laughs> not. Also, that seems like, we're talking canapes, and I have never associated canapes with camping. Yeah, there's definitely a disconnect between pictures <laughs> and, and, anyway. But that's the secret, is you cook your sandwiches on a stick over a... See. An open flame. I see. Um, what yeah. was this, 1920? This was 1930. Okay, 1930. 1930, sandwich secrets. Compliments to butternut bread. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's do... I'm trying to find something good with pictures, but uh, some of the earlier stuff doesn't have pictures. Let me see if this one does. No, this one doesn't. So, as always, if you're new here, uh, we're sharing um, rare books and manuscript items from... Um, the Special Collections and University Archives at Virginia Tech, and uh, the items we're looking at today, we're building up to learning about frosted sandwiches. Um, if you have questions, if you have comments, if one of the recipes you see sounds especially appealing, or you've had it before, or you just can't understand why anybody would pair those foods together, feel free to drop those comments in chat. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I've never cut a sandwich in thirds like this, mm -hmm. but I kind of like it. Um, this item is also, this is going to be, I think, a little bit around the same time. Let's see if I can find a date on it. Um, this, this author in particular wrote a lot. Yeah. yeah, she wrote a lot in um, the late 1930s, early 40s. So I don't have a specific date on this, but it's probably leading up to wartime. Um, probably not written during wartime because it seems like it might have been a little too... Um, it wasn't focused on rationing or limitations or in any way, shape, or form, so it probably predates World War II. Okay. And again, this is a sponsored pamphlet from Town Talk Bakers, which was another company, another bread company, so another bread sponsor that mm -hmm. we're looking at. Um, you when, <laughs> remind me when sliced bread, uh, I know it was after Betty White was born that sliced bread was introduced to the market but I don't yeah remember. I'm looking to see if another book that I have has the answer to that because um, it, I think it was like because I know Wonder Bread which we'll talk about at one point a little bit later um, came around in 1921 and they were one of the first companies to have sliced bread so I can, I can investigate we could ask the internet the sandwich um, I thought it might book. be in that book I had that we're gonna look at later so anyway Town Talk Bakers um, again this is a a, a bread company, uh, but Dimitri Taylor wrote a number of publications in this era. So um, this is another kind of thing I've come on the show and talked about before, where you see a pairing between a well-known food author and a corporate entity to promote a product. Um, 1928. 1928. Okay, that makes sense because Wonder Bread came around in 1921 and it was not originally sliced. So. Um, so we're going to think that there's different kinds of bread. Town Talk made white bread, wheat bread, and rye bread. Ooh. So they yeah. focus on a bunch of different that. And then we're going to talk about spreads. Spreads should be <coughs> soft and creamy on thin bread slices. Well, but if they're too soft and creamy, uh, they might tear. 
You want to use a wooden spoon to like work your butter or margarine to make that nice base for your sandwich. I have an entire recipe book of sandwich spreads. Um, and this is also the, this pamphlet I love because it's a Technicolor dream. We're, we're gonna we're gonna stumble through a Technicolor That's a dream great of sandwiches. Sure, the ham and egg sandwich there. Yeah. I don't particularly want to eat it, but it's a good picture. Now, she recommends using wax paper, waxed paper, or mm -hmm. cellophane, or parchment paper, and then wrapping your sandwiches in a damp towel mm -hmm. to help keep them moist. But you have okay. a nice protective layer before you just I put have, wet towel. I have indeed been provided with sandwiches that were uh, <clears throat> wrapped in just that way. But most importantly, we should have our fun mm -hmm. as we go. Yeah, so ham and eggs, um, America's favorite food combination. Yeah. Apparently. I, uh, one of America's favorite food combinations. And these are some decorative sandwiches. Again, we're building up to some things we're going to look at. And then we go back to black and white for a while. So the ham and egg, though, that was a, like a ham and egg salad, right? Oh, yeah. Let's go back and actually look at the recipe. Uh, Hard cooked eggs with ground ham and mustard and mayonnaise to hold everything together. On bread or rye or white. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's, Any kind it's of like an egg salad that has ham in it yes. as well. Not devil. Not I mean, there's devil no ham. spice okay. in here. Um, so uh, often bridge parties featured tea sandwiches. So we talked a little bit about cucumber sandwiches. But live we were talking about this being tea time and how we could have um, So you have this idea of dainty little sandwiches you can serve at a bridge party or a luncheon. Mm -hmm. Bridge party luncheons you'll often see them cooking use People use cookie cutters for the different suits of card, the deck of cards, so that you have shaped like diamonds, hearts, clubs, and spades. That, they very commonly made cookie cutters in those shapes, which I think largely was to feed into this idea of uh, like. That seems exactly like mm -hmm. what American party culture would have mm -hmm. done. Yeah. So this is a three-decker sandwich. Again, we're we're going beyond the piece of two pieces of bread. So we have uh, American cheddar cheese, not American cheese, American cheddar American. cheese. Okay. Cheddar cheese in America. America. Um, and then we have um, spread with mustard, and then we have a wheat slice with bacon strips, and then white bread again. And then we toast that in the broiler. I see I, that things are happening. Ouch. Oh no. What? Oh boy. So, from, from I Am Puddle Glum, true story. Once on a road trip, we passed a town called Hammond. Dad asked us, asked us if we knew what the high school football team was named. When we said we didn't know, he told us that the team name was the Eggs. The Ham and Eggs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Ham and Eggs. Excellently I appreciate this. done. It's an excellent dad joke. Um, and I don't know that the pun point command works today because I think that's run by a thing on my computer at home. Um, I'm going to make a note that if it does, gets some later. you deserve some. Or at a follow-up stream, I will appropriately assign pun Cause, points. Because that's on my my personal channel. We are professional somethings. We are something, all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got a lunchbox sandwich, uh, which is hearty and tempting. Uh, I don't know how tempting y'all might find cottage cheese and minced onion and parsley and celery mm. and bacon. They always put bacon in it, but also, again, bacon and peanut butter and cottage cheese. At a certain point in having looked at a lot, a lot, a lot of sandwich recipes in my time working with this collection, I really wonder at some combinations, and we'll get to some more of them, but I'm like, I've had why? peanut butter and cheese, and I've had peanut butter and pickle. I didn't realize that combining peanut butter with, like, every other possible sandwich topping was a thing. Uh, we have all three mods. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're, we're mod powers. Mod squad is here. Cool. We're here for it. Um, we have some Valentine's, so we're back to some more little heartsy sandwiches uh, with cream cheese and maraschino cherries in them on brand for Valentine's Day. I don't know about the Washington sandwich birthdays. It, well, I mean, I know what it's supposed to be purporting itself to be shaped like. I'm... It gonna, is not what you think. I'm going to read it because mm -hmm. it looks to me 
like those sandwiches are shaped like guns. But I'm, I'm gonna do something for you, and it, it might come into focus. Do you know the story of George Washington? Is it a and the cherry tree? I do. It's it's supposed to be axes. Ah. But when you turn it this way, it does way, not look like axes. It does not. George I first saw Martha. this and I got very concerned, and then I realized it's supposed to be axes. Yeah. But anyway. I mean, I saw it, the shape, and I was like Washington, and I was like. Okay, at least it's not Lincoln, because that shape with Lincoln didn't seem like a good pairing. Um, George and Martha seem highly pleased with the food prepared in honor of Washington's birthday, even though the hatchet-shaped sandwiches and the cherries are a reminder of a childhood escapade. Cut the pattern for the sandwiches from heavy cardboard. For half of the sandwiches, uh, wait, yeah, for half the sandwiches, Use wheat bread filled with a mixture of minced chicken, green pepper, pimento, and mayonnaise. For the rest, use white bread filled with a mixture of creamed butter or margarine and chopped watercress. The salad is made of diced apples and chopped peanuts garnished appropriately with cherries for dessert, sherbet, and cupcakes. <clears throat> also, Anybody with a peanut allergy, you don't want to touch these books. No, stay away from <laughs> a lot of these sandwiches. Um, We're back to baked beans. We got more baked beans. Mm. Uh, and more appropriately, afternoon tea sandwiches, mm -hmm. which is what we need uh, with us today. And so these are tiny sandwiches made of wheat or white and rye bread filling using horseradish. Mm -hmm. Two words. Let's put yeah. that back together. Sure. Uh, dry mustard and butter to which may be added finely chopped chives or parsley. You could add them, but mainly it's just horseradish, mustard, and butter. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I've ever really <clears throat> just gone out to have horseradish. Um, usually I just have it with sushi because they serve it and call it wasabi because that's as close as we get to wasabi in the US. <laughs> so if you've had sushi and you've had the wasabi that comes with sushi and you think of that spread on bread as a sandwich. Even traditional horseradish root, which is what they're talking about yeah. here, fresh grated is like enough to make your eyes water. I also want to point out the second, the back side of this illustration, which almost escaped your notice at first. Yeah, um, this is a grapefruit that has tiny, like, little bits of cake stuck on toothpicks in it as a decorative element. And olives as well. And cheese. Radish, cute. cake, and olives stuck in a grapefruit. Uh huh. It's like the shrimp tower at the holidays, I think, but. I think whoever made that illustration really disliked grapefruit. Also, what is the snowman? What is that? Uh, he's just a table decoration. He's not food. It's horrifying. I know. It's a little scary. Um, <laughs> Hannah said, Oh, yeah. I don't think you need mustard with horseradish. That's a choice. Apparently, for sure. this book disagrees. <laughs> <clears throat> um, once again, we've got some nice little uh, brand, uh, brand holiday sandwiches the shamrock and the hat. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Um, because everyone has cookie cutters of all of these shapes mm -hmm. just lying around in their home. <laughs> I mean, every good housewife would, apparently. So the the the, the hat sandwich <laughs> is wheat bread <clears throat> with mint jelly and cream cheese. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the shamrock is minced lamb, chopped chive, and mayonnaise. So like a lamb salad instead of a ham salad. That makes sense and it makes sense to pair them together but you would want to eat them together i mean you could take this sandwich and stick it on top of the hat and bite through both of them. yeah but because typically like if you're doing like a, a fancy easter dinner uh lamb with mint jelly would make sense um and like mint jelly is a typical topping for lamb um so pairing them together as sandwiches, that makes sense too, but you typically eat the mint jelly with the lamb and not as a separate thing. <clears throat> Speaking of being a decoration and not food, hi, Detective Zen. <laughs> a bubble decker, oh. 
<laughs> um, so let's see, we've got more like if you're gonna have sandwiches for dinner, some like simple things, I say simple, but these are like Monte Cristos, this is dipped in eggs and then cooked, so this one, this quick supper sandwich, mm -hmm. is like Monte Cristo style where you've taken the whole sandwich and dipped it in battered it, deep fried egg it. and then either deep fried it or cooked it on the put powdered sugar on it or not? This one not. This is a, uh, let's see, so for, for a quick festive supper, there's nothing like hot chicken salad sandwiches enhanced by celery curls, ripe olives, and coffee. Coffee? I like coffee, but not for dinner with chicken salad. So, so you make the chicken salad sandwiches ahead using white bread, and then you dip it in a mixture of beaten egg and milk and salt, and then saute, you saute these in margarine rather than deep okay. frying or baking but no powdered sugar mm. not Monte Cristo but Monte Cristo style <laughs> I mean how are you going to stay up all night if you don't drink the dinner coffee yeah so here we have our sandwich from the cover that is cut in a fun little triangle um, it looks like a slice of pizza except it's bread but it's bread yep and that is filled with minced tongue and pickle relish mm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so. I think it would take you about five times as long to carve those radishes as it would to make this sandwich. And I was just going to ask about the carved radishes, the, the floral radishes, mm -hmm. whether you're intended to actually eat them. I mean, I guess that's up to you. That's a lot of radish to just chomp, but. I, I've definitely heard the don't put it on the plate if it's not meant to be eaten. Um, but then I've also seen to cover the, up the surprise. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, finish your thought before I show everyone the surprise. I've also seen uh, people putting things on plates to decorate them, and you're not meant to eat them. And yeah. then when I do try to eat them, it isn't a pleasant experience. After dinner, coffee and sweets seems like it used to be much more of a thing than it is now. Yes. Yes. And key squared, I do drink coffee at night. I don't picture myself drinking coffee while eating a sandwich for dinner. That's just a combination I'm not quite sure about. Um, <laughs> are you allowed to eat the <laughs> sandwiches if your world is not monochrome? monochrome. Yes, you are. So <clears throat> over on this side, we've got some more themed sandwiches, but I want that we're, we are preparing for the first of, ta-da, the frosted sandwich. This elegant creation, we're gonna see lots more frosted sandwiches today, but this is what we have been building up to you for the show. Behold the frosted sandwich. Um, we're gonna talk a lot about these because they come in a lot of different forms, they come in a lot of different fillings, they get decorated in different ways. Let me read to you what yeah. the book says. This elegant creation is delicious as well as beautiful. And believe it or not, it's easy to make, but your guests won't know that. You will need nine slices from a loaf of white bread. Trim off crusts and place three slices end for end to make an even oblong. Put together with two different fillings. Ham loaf salad and egg olive salad make a good combination. First top and sides, or sorry, frost top and sides with well-seasoned cottage cheese. Garnish with sliced olives. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this does in fact look like a store-bought layer cake that someone laid Fruit Loops onto. Mm, so, yeah. a few observations about this frosted sandwich. Uh, one, it is not a single loaf of bread. It is three pieces of bread put together I, I and then stacked. I was very surprised to find that out. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was a single loaf that they had sliced Normally, that's what we would expect. Second of all, let's think about so this one. <laughs> uh -oh. Elegant as well as beautiful. It looks like a sugar on a platter. Um, yeah, sure. I, I can. Uh, this one, frosted with cottage cheese. Mm -hmm. I, there you go. There, we're we're going to get into frosting. Frosting. We're going to put Which, frosting in quotation the marks. The camera work, they. They completely, like, Look I at that perfect line of olives, which also kind of look like slices of hot dog that have been hollowed on the inside. I, I don't see the curd. Yeah, it must have been whipped pretty smooth. Because, <laughs> like, if you just put cottage cheese on it, it would just flop off yeah. the sides. So you had to whip this or stabilize it somehow. <laughs> um, but there you go. So. Oh, and uh, it's 
Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the dressing, the window dressing of the, mm -hmm. I, there's a term for it, but I forgot it. But anyway, you've got your cards and your bridge score pad. Uh, so this is definitely for a bridge night. Yeah, evening card party. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Because then you're going to cut this into slabs and give it to your friends or you know, perhaps your enemies. If, if I had read the caption. <laughs> yeah. You're going to give it to your friends or perhaps your enemies as, as if it was a slice of cake on a plate. Because you're not going to pick this up and eat it. I have no idea who Dylan oh, Hollis is. Oh, Dylan Hollis is the person who does a lot of the retro cooking on Instagram. He's just come out with a cookbook. Yeah, this is right up his, like, <laughs> yeah, this vibe. This is vibe. Uh, but you're going to get this in a slice on a plate like it's a piece of cake. Because you're not picking this up and eating a slice. Right. It's it's wet and drippy. And right. No, this it's going to be served like a layer cake. Yeah. Uh, Iron Trout. This is not, this is close. This is a frosted sandwich with a ham filling and an egg olive filling that is frosted with cream or with cottage cheese. We are going to get to some cream cheese loaf. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple other things I'll throw you in here that kind of go along this same alley. We have these like little kinds of sandwiches where we roll things up into cute little shapes. Uh -huh. We got curls, we got asparagus in bread. I mean, we got mini frosted things. I have, I've never, had those with bread, I, I, but with like um. Uh, Key squared, you ate this off of a cake plate with a fork. Yeah. You were not holding a, a, a hand of cards in one hand but and eating. I, I this definitely with the other. had like roll up sandwiches like mm -hmm. that with like a, a spread or cream cheese or something on the inside. It's usually uh, like a pickle, and then it's wrapped in like a tortilla that mm -hmm. had yeah. with with cream cheese. Yeah. So these ideas have not gone away, right? We think this is from a, like late 1930s or so. And these are things that we um, we haven't necessarily gotten away from. Um, my, I love that this one is just labeled uh, teenage sandwiches. And what it means is like a party platter for teenagers. But it makes it sound like these sandwiches are like 13 years old. <laughs> um, <laughs> mm -hmm. But you can put a little party platter together. Um, we got sandwiches for teenagers, and then we have sandwiches for children. For the children. Won't someone think of the children? <laughs> We're going what? to give them sandwiches. Oh, I should, I could zoom out again too, so we could see the whole page. But, yeah. Um. So this is peanut butter and cooked prunes or stewed raisins, lemon or lime juice, and evaporated milk. And you do cut the crust off, because, you know, little kids, not fans. Um, and then you pile them in log cabin fashion with carrot curls on the side. I went to try the chocolate potato cake once. Oh, they're talking about Dylan Hollis. Oh, okay. He, he made a, 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 a chocolate potato cake. I mean that... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I have seen um, <clears throat> Emmy, Emmy made yes. uh, do many strange things with... with Foods, so a chocolate potato cake does not surprise me at all. No, it's like the the cakes that are made with tomato soup. It actually works because it's really right. great for yeah. adding moisture. So here we have pinwheels. Um, another fun frosted example is this Fourth of July sandwich. If you're having a party on the fourth, by all means, serve these part pretty sandwiches. If not, file away the part, the plan, the idea for future use. Right? The picture shows you how to make them step by step. Cut thin slices of white bread in rounds. Spread lightly with mayonnaise. Put three rounds together with thin slices of tomato and cucumber as shown. Frost with softened cream cheese. Top with a tiny American flag. So we have crossed over into the land of cream cheese frosting. This is not, so we've had cottage cheese, we've had cream cheese. Believe me, I've got more frostings coming for you. I think I, think I broke uh, Rogan EXE. <laughs> Sorry, I just <laughs> What is your question? You're just staring and I'm a little concerned about. <laughs> what, what, what is, is that like a frosted hamburger? Oh, it's just a little round with a slice of tomato and then another slice of bread and then a slice of cucumber and then another slice of bread and then it's frosted and cream cheese. Okay. But my brain in, uh, sees the image and I see a frosted hamburger because 4th mm -hmm. of July. It does look like a tiny frosted hamburger, but it's not. I have yet to come across a <laughs> frosted hamburger. That could be unsettling. Um, 
Let's see. We got picnic sandwiches. We've got sandwiches for porch suppers. <laughs> yes, Detective Zen, these sandwiches were made before arteries were invented. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were all deeply relieved that you have not yet found frosted hamburger. It's still it's not out there. I just haven't found one yet. Um, we have a club. So your classic club sandwich. We call these that the seems demi. Really small. Well, that's why they call it the demi club sandwich. Ah. They're easier to eat than the towering old-fashioned kind that skidded all over the plate with the touch of a fork. For real enjoyment, these can be eaten out of the hand, as sandwiches should be, unless it's a frosted sandwich, because you can't eat that out of your hand. It just, uh, Hannah, <clears throat> um, yes, despite all of these frosted sandwiches, the idea of a frosted hamburger was unsettling to me, mm -hmm. because... I don't know how you'd frost it. It would just, whatever you frost it with would melt back off from the heat. I know. I don't think so you would could have frost it. it would a cold off. hamburger. Yeah. Which, I, I don't know, it was just, I, I had never conceived of, I mean, serving, serving savory items that should be warm cold is a whole thing. We could, we, we do still need to do a, a stream where we're looking at aspect. Yeah, we're going to do an aspect stream that is on the list. Um, I'm trying to see what else we have in here <laughs> that is fun and technicolor. Um, we are... We should look at something else. We have else. half an hour yeah. left, technically. Oh, what? Or, no, uh, we have more sorry. than that. Um, okay, so here's another, minutes. here's a ribbon sandwich. I want to touch on this one before we look at something else. I can read the clock. Yes, Key Squared. We've been talking around the Aspic stream. The reason we did this is it was easier to put together Frosted Sandwich, one, uh, frosted sandwich stream also. Uh, if you did not know it, August is National Sandwich Month. So we thought we would celebrate the sandwich by talking about it. I think we picked this as a topic and then discovered that it was National Sandwich Month. This is... <laughs> uh... <laughs> which, which... I appreciate your your, clar your careful clarification there, Key Squared. Yes, an Aspic-themed Twitch stream, not a hydrological stream filled with Aspic. Uh, who says frosted burgers have to use sweet frosting? You can make a good barbecue frosting. That's true. Uh, kettle dog would absolutely. I mean, these are cream cheese. Uh, or cottage cheese. I'm still or, worried it would melt they're off. They're still savory. Um, I'm still worried it would melt off. The issue that we're having with a frosted hamburger is that if you serve it warm, whatever you're trying to frost it with is going to melt and drip off of it, and it's just going to be a, a, a mess. So I, I don't know how to stabilize it so that it stays on the burger. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a classic <laughs> ribbon sandwich. So we have two different kinds of bread in multiple four layers. And then we cut it into tiny little ribbon slices uh, with different fillings. And all of these, like this book has specific fillings. A lot of the cookbooks we have are like, use these fillings or your favorite fillings. Like you could literally plug whatever you wanted to into so these the kind of recipes. ribbon sandwiches, again, this is a... This is <laughs> Frosted a hamburger sounds like a reverse sloppy joke. <laughs> use icing. Um, <laughs> the, the ribbon sandwich, it looks like another um, another classic pastry technique yeah uh, where you're doing the checkerboard cake and you can do checkerboard sandwiches too if you do this the other way if you cut a dip yeah you can put together checkerboard sandwiches yeah I mean too. But, but the same technique that you use to do like checkerboard cakes or or um, like here's a fun one we that looks the same we suggest the following filling cottage cheese minced sweet pickle or pickle relish a few drops of Worcestershire that's one filling Mm -hmm. Mashed liverwurst, mayonnaise, and a little bit of ketchup. That's your other layer. Okay. So there you go. I've, I've never actually like put anything else with liverwurst. Just like liverwurst and onion. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Let me find something else. Let's go into some more frosted territory. I think the, one of the funny things for me has been when I find frosted sandwich recipes, if they're in black and white, it's somehow more terrifying because I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Um, so this <laughs> booklet, 500 tasty sandwiches. Who says you have to eat it clean like an adult? Just grab it like an untamed <laughs> little human gremlin and eat it like <laughs> like one hand yes. and face yeah. all messy. With barbecue. Yes, absolutely. That, that seems very appropriate. 
Uh, here we have 500 sandwiches. We're going to get into double deckers and triple deckers. This does have frosted sandwich in it as well. Um, this is from 1941. Okay. Yeah. So sure. We're in this same era. Just prior to like. Yeah. U.S. World War II time. Uh, <laughs> with a number of things on this cover. Yeah, I was like, what is? No, that's an open face sandwich, and, that, and that's the go well. That's the top of the sandwich that goes on the asparagus. Yeah, that's uh, they've opened up that sandwich. They, it's an uh, it's a deconstructed sandwich. That's what Culinary Arts Institute, one of yes. America's They're, foremost organizations devoted to the science of better cookery. The Culinary Arts Institute. We have like. They made pamphlet after pamphlet after pamphlet that were like 500 of this or 250 of this or 300. We have a whole bunch of these. We could do a whole episode on these, but uh, we have a whole bunch of these. So this is sandwich based, um, but it was a it was a group out of Chicago and they provided all these pamphlets on how to cook with a specific food or a specific ingredient, um, and um, and that kind of thing. So we have uh, some fancy breads. We're gonna start with some uh, uh, some sweet stuff, some butter butterscotch bread. There's one I haven't really run into before. Not sure that's a thing I want. Um, if they don't have the energy to close their bread creation, they don't get to call it a sandwich. <laughs> Wait, caramel fig. I mean, open face sandwiches are a thing. Caramel fig bread. Caramel fig bread. Mm. Um, so we have a lot of like sweet breads, and then we get into like our classic sort of fillings. Uh, and we get into the game of talk about some fancy little shapes and uh, there's some really thin ribbons and we got some nice little checkerboards. We got some little towering infernos of uh, oh. <laughs> sandwich. So the ribbon, that is, um, that's a technique, that's another pastry technique. Up. Oh, you're looking up that uh, pastry technique. Yeah. So this would have been uh, this in this case you would have taken the bread and rolled it out with a rolling pin so it's really flat. Yeah. To make the layers. Was, but yeah, you're I, thinking about milfoy. Yeah. The milfoy what French the American technique. Name was. It's a um, called a, a Napoleon in North America. It's called a vanilla slice in the UK. Mm -hmm. a, a custard slice. Um, it's milfoy. Yep. It, it is a really thin layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. Uh, to make a cake, that's essentially what they're adapting when they're doing the ribbon sandwich. <laughs> um, I once yeah. had a double decker, but it wasn't a sandwich. Oh dear. Was it a butt? Um, Let's not go there. Uh, could be a yeah. Okay. I like these ones where they like take the inside out and then they fill them with something and they like put a little olive on top. Like, I don't know, that's a sandwich. Anyway, um, so many little your sandwich. I'm not making a platter like this. The amount of time that goes into doing that—that's a lot of work. That, that is, is a lot of work. That is multiple days of work. And how are or you going to keep those people. sandwiches moist? I don't know. Um, let's see. These ones that have lovely little olive decorations all over them, or Fruit Loops is. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting to me because I have never, like, sandwiches for me were always just really, really basic. Bread, something inside of it, mm -hmm. bread. Unless you're talking like a Monte Cristo. So to see all of these and realize that they're just using the, like, they're using pastry techniques. They're using the techniques that are still used today for, uh, yeah, for chocolates like and piping. cakes and... Yeah, they're like, like piping cream cheese around the edges yeah. of things and... And I, I had never, never considered do, using those types of techniques for sandwiches. Dun, da, da, da. Sandwich loaf. So we call this one the sandwich loaf rather than a frosted sandwich. But it's a frosted sandwich. But it is a frosted sandwich. Um, let's see. This is not actually, the recipe is not actually on this page, so they're, they're uh, tricking me. Yeah, I, try, I was looking, trying to find it. Um... Let's see. Uh, oh, uh, let me there find. was a caption above it. Yeah, but With it just says... sandwich loaf, fillings must harmonize in flavor and contrast, in color and texture. Basically, they, you could fill it with any of the fillings that we've had, but I think there was... a sandwich. Consider it a sandwich. Probably not. So, uh, we have some fun techniques for how you can fill your, create, create different shapes and make fancy things.
things. Um, we can do the ribbon. We can do the really fancy checkerboard technique. Um, here we go. I knew I'd find it. The party sandwich loaf. So you have a one unsliced loaf of bread, two cups of diced cooked corned beef, six tablespoons of chopped sweet pickles, a cup of mayonnaise, and some salt and pepper. So you again cut off all the crust so that your frosting can work its way into that sandwich, I guess. I don't know. Um, and then you make the long slices and then you fill it on up. And then this one, I believe, is frosted. Let's see. This one was frosted with mayonnaise. Oh no, this is the filled one. So I think that other one was frosted with mayonnaise too. This is the treasure sandwich chest over here where you gut it and you fill it. And I'm then, gonna read about that one yeah. in a second. Uh, Carol Dogwood, um, I, we can surely do a pronoun check. Mine, uh, mine are he, they. Uh, mine are she, her. And if people in chat would care to share theirs, um, that, uh, <laughs> I, I want to read about this treasure sandwich chest. Uh, cut the <laughs> rounded top about a quarter inch of loaf from a loaf of bread. Turn loaf upside down on the cut edge and working on the bottom of the loaf with a sharp pointed knife, cut along each edge, leaving a half inch margin all around. Cut through to the top side so that the entire center may be pushed through the crust shell in one piece. Cut the bread from center into slices, spread with butter and a sandwich spread or filling, and cut off bottom crust. Place sandwiches on a double fold of waxed paper, just the width of the sandwiches. Lower all at one time into the chest and pull paper out as sandwiches are slipped into place. So you can see the picture at the top. We're Use top we're shoving crust all the for the cover to the chest. So you've got the outer crust that you've hollowed out and used the interior to make sandwiches that and then reinserted them <laughs> and put the lid back on the crust. Yeah. Wow. Obviously, isn't that how we make sandwiches? <laughs> it's amazing. Um, Ooh, Louisiana crawfish and hot pepper sandwich. That sounds delicious. We've got some cornucopia teasers. So you roll them into little cornucopias. There's so much you can do. If you think a sandwich is just a filling between two slices of bread, y'all, I am Frosted here. Frosted party special. So many, for, so many, so many. I don't even know where to start, right? We've got some individual rounds. So like our 4th of July ones, um, we've got these little rounds. We have the Frosted Sandwich Loaf. Uh, this one is frosted in cream cheese, again. I love, I love the one in the upper right. Mm-hmm. So because this one it's talking about the beautiful goldenrod color. Right, because you have frosted this sandwich in cream cheese and then you have taken hard cooked egg yolks and put them all over the top. It's, I love, but it's black I and love white. That it's black and white and they're raving about the beautiful goldenrod color. Mm -hmm. um, but also sieved egg yolk. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we have down here the frosted sandwich in all its glory. And there are different fillings. So this is one where they they have the frosted sandwich loaf, which is like your normal one over here. Um, and they offer different combinations of fillings because as they said before, your fillings should harmonize. You've got your own individual mm -hmm. yeah. sandwich loaves. Can't these people just <laughs> do, do double, double eggs, eggs like everyone Yeah, else? but then you could stick them in a sandwich <laughs> puddle glum. Why would you? <laughs> and uh, a reminder for anybody who may have joined and um, hasn't really spent a lot of time here in this show. This show goes out to two different channels, uh, BTUL Studios as well as uh, Roman 27. So twitch.tv slash BTUL Studios and twitch.tv slash Roman 27. So you may see us um, uh, reacting to chat from either channel. So I want to mention a couple here because we have like this one, which is one layer of sliced tomato and cucumber and a layer of salmon and nut filling, and a, letter, a layer of lettuce and mayonnaise. But we can also go the sweet side and do um, a layer of cream cheese and nut filling, some orange mm -hmm. marmalade, and some date and orange filling. Yeah, I mean, that's coming very uh, close to just being a cake, <laughs> yeah. like a dessert. Yeah, we've got a pickle, bacon, and egg salad combo, which to be honest, I would probably eat this. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't seem too outlandish. Yeah. Um, 
so then we have the frosted party special, which, We're, as we've already talked about, is apparently a lovely goldenrod color that none of us are being allowed to I, witness. I'm so sad. Zen. Uh, we haven't even reached the 50s. Yeah, yet. this is 1941. <laughs> we haven't even, and we're going to go back before we go forward. Swedish um, Smorgastarte, which looks like a cake, but is a giant yes, frosted sandwich. Yes, it is sandwich. a giant frosted sandwich. I don't have one of those for the show today, but that would be a good one. Um, let's see. We got a lot more like shaped sandwiches. That was like this was like my fun frosted page because yeah, no, this that's is a like great page. Um, We'll see if there's anything else we want to look at in here before we move on. Talk about a, a cookie cutter, just everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that one's got horseshoes on it. I don't, I don't even know what's going on there. Um, we've got some hot sandwiches. Uh, some here's some open face. Yeah. So for those of you who may not know this, I, I have I do show up here. Once uh, I, I run a sometimes blog, although it's been inactive for quite a while. Um, and Frosted Sandwiches have a four-part series on our food history blog. Um, and we are going to bring up one of the posts in a moment, I think, because uh, there is a Frosted Sandwich that I want to show you all that I have in the collections, but I couldn't locate for today because um, it's a single page ad from something. And so uh, I want to make sure that you all enjoy the glory that is the Spam Dandy. I will find it. Which is the Spam Frosted Sandwich. I think it's from the first Frosted Sandwich blog post. I, I will locate it. Uh, well, I keep flipping. Yeah. So uh, we have an open-faced <clears throat> asparagus thing that is probably like this tall. I don't even know like how you would eat this because it's going to be like, I keep saying where my camera is. It's going to be a nice tall sandwich um, with just some asparagus stuck in there. Now you can get in on your waffle. You can get your waffle iron in on this. And So we got, here's the one from the cover, which is this open-faced uh, asparagus thing. Um, and uh, yeah, then we got things that are covered in things. So like, is an open-faced sandwich a sandwich? Uh, for those of you, we, we, we shared a link earlier. I didn't want to open this up on stream because I feel like we would go uh, way down the rabbit hole, but the cube, cube rule, rule is a really fun website that talks a little bit about maybe what constitutes a sandwich or doesn't constitute or a sandwich a soup, or a salad or a soup or, or is a cake a sandwich because would a frosted sandwich as I posed to Anthony while we were preparing this would a frosted sandwich actually constitute a cake? I think it is. It uses pastry techniques to make. Yeah. Place bread on cutting board, coat, slice with butter, slap cheese on bread, grab cooked crawfish, place on cheese and include European style bacon bits. You can use American if you want. Flatten bread and place atop. Grab hot peppers of your choice and add to stack, then butter the other slice and add cheese before placing it on your peppers. Then cook on a panini press or a hot pan. So that's that would be the um, <clears throat> the Louisiana mm -hmm. crawfish and pe hot pepper sandwich, which sounds really good. And then of course you could chill it and frost it. Oh. <laughs> uh, and just for you, Zen, we looked at the, I, I joked about the Towering Inferno, which was the three-layered canapé. This is the literal pyramid sandwich. It, everyone loves to demolish these pyramids since each layer offers a fresh surprise. I've said this on the stream before. I say this to a lot of people when I talk about food history. I don't like to see the word surprise anywhere near a recipe. I don't want to be surprised. I don't want to, I want to know what I'm getting out of this deal. I... Yeah, I, I, I understand the visual impact of something like that for a party setting. And then the skyscraper sandwich is a sweet variation on this because it is cream cheese and marmalade and dried fruits and nuts. The cake is a double decker sandwich. Yeah. Or triple. Yeah. It's a literal pyramid scheme. Uh, yeah. Detected is in. Excellent. Uh, um, do you want to show people that? Sure. Okay, so Why this, not? this is a sandwich that I, I couldn't, like I said, I didn't get my hands on the ad uh, to bring today, but I, I know that the picture existed and I wanted to show okay. it to y'all. Just make sure I'm. Uh, and we are trying to bring that up on a, another fun window. That's that's gonna be the thing. So many different 
buttons to pay attention to. And here we go. Ta-da! Enter the spam dandy. And my head is probably in the way, but I don't know how to get my head um, not not in the way. <laughs> spam dandy, spam witches. Uh, I can. You, yeah, I'll let you read it. <laughs> not zoom in. Let let us zoom back out. Please. Oh, we're going in. Uh, so the first time I saw this, I did know that it said spam dandy, but in my head, I was like, "What is up with this coconut cake?" Pineapple on the outside. It is not. <laughs> Uh, it is like spam and lettuce and mayonnaise and tomato and olive and chicken and more lettuce and tomato. <laughs> you you and prefer, prefer it in black and white. And it is, <clears throat> it is uh, a mix of chopped uh, of whipped cream and uh, yeah. I do think that if you put fried chicken in between waffles, it is a sandwich. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I also think that if you put a hamburger patty in between two uh, glazed donuts, that that's also a sandwich. Mm -hmm. Spam dandy spam witches. Party spam witch loaf. Lovely to look at, luscious to eat. Cut crusts from unsliced square sandwich loaf. Cut lengthwise into four slices. Butter. Put slices together with one sliced spam, lettuce, mayonnaise. Two sliced tomato, sliced ripe olives. Three chicken, lettuce, mayonnaise. Coat entire loaf with mixture of mayonnaise stiff whipped cream, and chopped hard-cooked eggs. Chill three to five hours. To serve, cut across loaf in thick slices. Yeah, that's the spam. Apparently your mic is cutting out still, or again. Um, I don't know why, it's, I must be like, slid away or something because I already changed I could try changing again but I don't know why it doesn't like me I don't know that's okay we'll make do um, but anyway I wanted to show everybody that one which is I have uh, a okay you have a thought um, I, I don't know if it will help okay what we have a lot of cables underneath us, and I almost just got yanked to the floor. Don't mind me. It's a temporary setup every single time. <laughs> so, um, okay, well, okay. You're, you'll have to pause speaking for a moment. Okay. I don't. I don't know if I want to eat a hamburger donuts in thinking about the conversation that's happening in chat right now. Are hopefully that makes a difference. I don't uh, know. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, Rogan has tried to change something, and I'm gonna keep talking, and hopefully also let me know if it sounds like I'm not cutting out as much. Do do do. Technical difficulties are fun. Please stand by. You're not getting captions, so I'm not sure they hear you at all. Oh, now you can't hear me at all. Okay. Of course not. Oh, Lord Lord, Lord Portico can hear me. So I don't know, but apparently I'm not being captioned now. So this is getting confusing. So weird, man. Dun dun dun. We hear. Okay, it's still cutting out. I don't know. I've turned off my fan. I if I get this mic any closer to my mouth, I'm gonna be eating it like it's a sandwich. Um. Hmm. <laughs> It's better than it has been. Huh. It's so... I might just have to... <laughs> like so many online programs, have we been foiled by spam? I think you're right, Key Squared. We may have been foiled by spam. I was so excited to show that off uh, that it broke us. <laughs> There's... Another possible. Another possibility. I don't know if it will. Mm. I'm on one side of the lights, and Anthony's over there. So I have no idea what's happening on the other side of the room, and I'm just keeping. I'm just going to keep talking yeah. uh, and vamping so that we can see if this is getting 
uh, some better audio. But yeah, anyway, the first time I saw this this ad, I thought that this was a coconut cake with like crushed pineapple yeah, on the outside. Like and I didn't really like understand what was going on. And then I realized it was full of meat and it was a sandwich, not a cake. But as we are discovering, perhaps cakes are sandwiches. Somehow. It seems like I'm working. I'm just kind yeah. of cutting out, so. I just wish that I could do better with that, which the option there would be possibly if I can get one of these other mic packs to work. Well, to be fair, we are winding down towards the last half hour of the show, so. You can just keep going. Yeah, but I can't. I don't know how to switch, switch the screen over, uh, and we're still sharing this fam dandy. Gotcha. Um. Dun, 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 dun. Because I got a few more frosted things to show y'all. And then I have uh, something not not frosted sandwich related, but sandwich related that I am sharing. I'm saving for the end of the show. Um, I think that will be a fun surprise. So the next thing we're going to look at is out of, I'll try to show you the item itself because that in and of itself is worthy of some attention. Um, and when we are getting ready to switch things back over, um, I'm going to put this out so that we can all see it when we switch over. Um, dun, dun, dun. I, Detective Zen, was that yay because I'm sharing a surprise and you're scared? Because this is, it's going to be way less scary than what I've been sharing on the show so far. <laughs> there we go. So the next thing we're going to look at comes out of this lovely little red box. And it's a little hard to read, but it says the Betty Crocker Recipe Card Library. Um, and if I open it up, yay! This is in fact from 1971. This is a box of recipes. There are different, uh, it's broken up into different sections. We have seasonal favorites, budget casseroles, American classics, salads for every occasion. Um, so there's about 26 different sections in here because they have letters of the alphabet 24 actually they only use um, international favorites uh, gifts from your kitchen oh gonna try a different mic pack and see if that works um, neo yeah so you don't see a lot of recipe libraries uh, I'm really excited to say that our collection actually holds two versions of this one, which is cool. Neither of ours are complete, so I think somehow now with two sets, it kind of all goes together. Uh, and then we have a slightly different edition from another year. Um, so this is 1971, and I believe we have one from uh, the late 1960s, so 68 or 69. Um, we're going to a section called, let's see, crowd-sized entertaining. Dun, da, da, dun. Okay. And then I'm going to move this out of the way because I already pulled out the cards we're going to look at. Hopefully, microphone switch is better. I don't know. But if it continues to cut in and out, let me know so that I can troubleshoot before the next And stream. I could just stop talking and then I could just let people guess at what I'm saying. That could be fun. I could do charades. No. <laughs> no one wants to do that. Uh, do the, any of the recipes teach you how to cook Betty Crocker? They do not, Zen. Um, if you caught, I haven't, we haven't cut out yet since the pack switched. Okay. Thank you, Hannah. Uh, so the first thing we're going to look at here is another example of our friend, the ribbon sandwich. Oh, we can zoom in. We can zoom in because these are smaller cards. Um, so party sand, whoa. <laughs> oh, I, can, I can zoom out a little bit so we get the whole card. Party sandwiches for a crowd. And if you flip this over, we get to learn what's in it. And this one tells us how to do things we've already talked about today. How to do checkerboard sandwiches, how to do ribbon loaves, how to do pinwheels, how to do shrimp cu cucumber rounds, because apparently that's the one where we're gonna focus on something unique. Um, mm -hmm. But all of these are like, just use whatever spread you want. Have fun with it. Um, but I like these because they're from the 70s. So not only let's make the point that we are now in the 1970s, so we have come 40 years forward and we are still talking about checkerboard and ribbon sandwiches. If you caught the graphic for today's show, you may have seen this. Mm -hmm. Enter the 1971 party sandwich loaf. 
not only is it decorated, it has a fancy design. And like, I love how you can see the marks on the bottom of the plate. So you're like, oh, they clearly cut away part yeah. of this. Oh, and then yeah. you can see a little slice in the corner. Um, so the party sandwich loaf. This is like serious decor. So we... <laughs> so in this case, we're going to trim the crust. Once again, we're going to trim the crust from our loaf of bread. We're going to cut it lengthwise into four slices because we're going three layers. <laughs> then, yes. We're going to spread all of our slices with softened butter. We're going to take our 1920s technique and use it in the 1970s. Uh -huh. Has not gone away. Uh, put in some salmon filling. Put on another slice of bread. Put in some chicken olive spread. Put on another piece of bread. Put on some golden cheese spread. Mm. Uh, and then we're going to top it with more bread. And then we're going to take some butter, some cream cheese, and some light cream. And we're going to make it yellow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to frost our loaf and you can uh, keep it cold and chill it. And then in this case, you could take some cress and some chives and some carrot and what are either grapes or olives, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Given the golden, or the, it's golden. Given the reddish color, I would think grapes. On carrots, yeah. That's really what it looks like. <laughs> Good um, advice. <laughs> <laughs> Historical advice, no portico. So no. this is the first time I see anybody in the 19th, then there could be recipes in between, but in, in terms of our collection, this is the first time I saw somebody say, hey, let's not only frost this sandwich, let's tint it a specific color uh -huh. instead of just using egg yolk. Yeah. Um, so that's a fun one. And then if you want to take bread out of the equation, Why? enter ham snacks. <laughs> this is ham dip. Wrapped in cream cheese. <laughs> no bread, but we are going to put it on crackers. Wow. So I put it out because I feel like it still fits the category. Uh, but yeah, this is like a deviled ham. Can't turn this over. Uh, deviled ham rolls. So it's deviled ham from a can and some chopped olives. And you wrap it in cream cheese and mustard and have fun. So it's a frosted sandwich without the bread. <laughs> Sorry, when I first saw it, it made me think of Spam inside Mozzarella. Zen, what, do you want me to go back to this? Is this your uh, decorations? Let's put decorations on our crime against food. <laughs> if, if anybody has ever seen the social media um, account, the 70s dinner That's party. 70, yeah, 70s dinner party is a good um, one. <clears throat> this is the type of thing uh, that 70s dinner party shares on social media. Um, it's, <laughs> this is getting into an existential sandwich of Theseus situation. Uh, so that was Betty Crocker. I've got one more I want to show you from Craft that is also one of the early ones that I found when I was working with this material. We've taken away every recognizable part of a sandwich. Is it still a sandwich? Let's see. So this is from Craft Cheese Company, still in existence today and has had about 12 different name changes. Um, and uh, so we've got some craft recipes in here. And in the 70s. What's your deal? What's well, your deal? Well, apparently, it came from the 20s. 30, 20s, 30s is where you start to see this, and then. Um, I always thought it was a 1970s thing too. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere in here is but what I'm looking it's for. It's not. It's Edwardian. <laughs> it's from. Oh. It's from having the the. It's, Speaking what was of, the show with the upstairs, downstairs, Edwardian era? Downton Abbey? Downton Abbey, thank you. It's like Downton Abbey era dinner parties. Uh, that here's is the a, here's a nice little aspic preview for oh whenever we do the aspic show. But uh, let me see. That's I'm, not as scary as duck and aspic. I'm trying to find a very specific page here. So That's dun, just dun, tomato dun, flavor dun. jello. Um, uh, <laughs> I think uh, somebody brought up deviled eggs before. Why can't you just do deviled eggs? I mean, you could just do deviled eggs. Thanks. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, Kraft calls it the ribbon sandwich loaf because they did many layers. Which, um, so again, in this case, we're taking day old wheat and white bread. So if you got that leftover bread, you don't know what to do with. Uh, and you can cut lengths of it. So you're going to have a lot of layers. And they, they specifically tell you to use Philadelphia cream cheese. Well, yes, because. 
Hashtag not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. Um, <clears throat> and craft mayonnaise because this is craft. Um, so we're going to spread mayonnaise on everything. Why not? We're going to do a layer of tomato. We're going to do, uh, you know, some ham mayonnaise, which is ham, canned, minced ham and mayonnaise. They just sold. I'm pretty sure they did. Ham salad in a can. Yeah, pretty basically. sure. Might have been in a jar. We'll look at the beginning. Probably, it might, it yeah. might have been. Uh, then we're going to put some more mayonnaise because there's not enough mayonnaise on here. Well, never enough mayonnaise. Uh, and then, yeah, and then we're going to frost this um, whole thing. We're going to frost this whole thing with uh, cream cheese that's thinned with milk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it really does look like a lovely buttercream. <laughs> I mean, it does. It looks like a great dessert. That somebody put so much time into, and I would be so sad. It's jarred ham and A's. Delicious sandwich spread. It's got ham and pickles. I mean, that honestly, it's not super weird. Yeah. It's basically ham salad in a jar. Yeah. So it just, I didn't know it had existed. But There's it, also tasty it's spread, like but I don't they know what's do their, going on there. Um, I forget what they ended up calling it. But they claimed to have invented it, and I don't remember if it's craft. But the the mayonnaise ketchup. Oh yeah, yeah. But I, I they it's out now. You can buy it on on store shelves instead of having to like mix your own ketchup and mayonnaise together. But uh, yeah. Um, this is another fun one where they have some uh, at the back. Uh, if I can find it, this is all advertisements for craft. So we've just got some fun advertisements for mm -hmm. cream cheese and. Chef's table cheese. Velveeta. Brick processed Velveeta and, uh, you know, old English, like, cheese in a jar and uh, some other, let's see what else is on Swiss there. Pimento Swiss Velveeta. pimento Velveeta. Pimento Pimento? They did different kinds of Velveeta? They did. They did. Amazing. All I, these that's, different things. They, I mean, Jello used to make savory flavors, so. Yeah. Um, okay, so, I think I have... <laughs> I always love... The, the food streams. I'm always dumbfounded by the end. Uh, one more cover that I'll show you because talk about decorative sandwich platters that Zoom take forever to make. Might have one. Hey, Rita, menu magic. Sandwich and dessert book. Bruce Dunbar, uh, Merida Home Service Institute. Uh, so basically, I like the, I wanted to show you how to cover that one. Because we were looking at items before where there were pastry techniques involved. Like, how long does it take to put this together? I, I don't have that kind of time. finger sandwiches, but they're basically... Canapes. They're, they're basically fancy. savory pedophore. Um. <clears throat> yeah. Um, platter just makes you want Christmas cookies. And there's more of them. Like, there's tons of platters in here that just keep getting more and more fancy. So, lots of stuff going on. Wow. Um, let's see. Do I have any more fun pictures in here? And then we'll... Oh, yeah. That was the other reason. I, I truly confess I'm not quite sure what's going on down here. This is called a garden sandwich. Um, it's got a lot of things going on. Is that a mound of... Uh, like an ice cream that's, scoop of cottage yes, cheese? Yes, that's cottage cheese and peaches three, in the center. Oh, peach slices. Yes. I thought it was orange slices. But, uh, surrounded by lettuce and then... Sandwich bread. Peanuts, bacon bits. One is carrot. One is red pe or green pepper. pepper. Green pepper. One is radish. There's some cucumbers, some celery, some peanuts. Like you can pick whatever toppings you want. Yeah, I was just looking at the photo. I wasn't looking at the actual like instructions. Yeah. So bell pepper, cashews well, or peanuts or, yeah. or some sort of nuts. Yeah. Bacon. Uh, no, I think that's either radish or pimento. Ah, uh, probably pimento. And then. I don't know. I'm Something uncertain. golden colored. So you, but, but the whole point here is it's a topical display of the Minecraft world. That could be diced peaches. It could like be small. So you know, you just take peaches. some bread, you butter it because that's what we always do, and then you put some various raw toppings on it, and have it with your cottage cheese and peach salad. And you're meant to consume it how? Uh, probably with that knife and fork. Do you fold No, it? I think you just cut little pieces off or maybe you pick up a triangle and eat it with your hand. 
I don't know. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want it. That's the quote of the show. I don't want it. Um, let's see. Is there anything else in here? And then we'll move on to the last item I wanted to show people today, which, again, not a frosted sandwich. Although, in this one, they do talk about cakes, too. So there's the argument that maybe cakes are sandwiches, too. I mean, it's the same techniques. So that, that's been the most surprising thing for me, is, like, cake techniques and... and these party sandwiches are made the same way, just one's sweet and the other's savory. Yeah. I don't know. So It's a thing to think about. I think cakes are frosted sandwiches. We have a vote. Cakes are frosted sandwiches. Okay. So, this is the last item I brought for us today. Which, I don't... I, I need something for scale, right? Because... Oh. Um. Oh, here. Here's my cell phone. So for scale, if we zoom back out for a second, uh, this is one one of the tiny. This is actually one of the tiniest cookbooks in our collection. So, uh, just for scale for the moment, uh, this is a third the size of my cell phone. And that's, that's Anthony's that's much cell smaller phone. cell phone. Um, welcome to the Tiny Book of Sandwiches. Huzzah! Tiny Book of Sandwiches was published in 1905. Uh, it is part of a series. <laughs> There was the tiny book on sandwiches, the tiny book on uh, salads, the tiny book on chafing dish recipes. Yeah, we did a, I did an yeah. entire episode on. Um, there was a tiny book on books. Yeah. And so I don't know if this one was on it, but so they they were published as little standalone items. There's actually a group of them that were bound together. I did not grab that for today. Um, <laughs> this is going to be fun to show on camera because my Please fingers break. are just going to cover everything the whole time. Um, so the funny thing about this, well, not funny thing. One thing that surprised me about this is it is actually quite legible. I mean, it has a fancy title page. I have it's to remember where the camera's legible. on. Whoops! No, nope, uh, too far, too when, far. Oh, we can. I, I can give you borders. That would help because then I will. I will not <laughs> swing wildly with this tiny item. Uh, I used to have tape on the table, but it's not okay. there anymore. So. That will help. Uh, if I give you a border <laughs> with the book snake, the snake weight. Creativity on the fly. Uh, then, Just like we did in rehearsal. Then you'll know. Yeah, no, we didn't rehearse. <laughs> we didn't rehearse. rehearse. We don't rehearse. Rehearse. Okay. No, we, we don't rehearse. We don't. <laughs> so it has a fancy script on the title page, but the whole book is not written this way. The tiny book. On, on sandwiches. sandwiches. Still the tiny book on sandwiches. From Livermore at night in 1905. 1905, Providence, Rhode Island. We've got, mm, look at that, aspic, aspic jelly for sandwiches right off the bat. Banana. Banana, baked bean, caviar. We're going to get real fancy. Mm -hmm. Many kinds of cheese sandwiches. Cheese, cheese and anchovy, cheese and olive, cheese and English walnut. I'm glad my fingernails haven't broken because I can use them to hold this tiny book open. Cherry, chestnut and liver. Some chicken, uh, some club sandwiches. Chow paste. I, I think we may have looked at that when I did the miniature books episode. Okay. Uh, some fish, some fig, some German sandwiches. Czar sandwich. Green butter. Mm. Uh, ham and no corn. No green eggs and ham. Though. No green eggs and ham. Harlequin, the hot ham. Does it come with the Smurf who makes the sandwiches for I you? I hope so because. We got jelly. We got lobster sandwiches. Lobster sandwiches with aspic. No, thank you. Not the aspic. Minced clam. Mutton. <laughs> uh, Noisette sandwiches. Whatever uh, that is. Nasturtium folds. Mm -hmm. Nasturtium folds. We got some orange. Green butter is just an avocado, says New York. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's butter with, <clears throat> like, chopped herbs mixed in. I think so. Yeah. But I agree with you, Neo Gets. If I want green butter, it's an avocado. We got potato sandwiches. And we got raw beef. I will say, having looked into recipe books many times on this series, avocado toast mm -hmm. is not a millennial invention. It is not a millennial invention. It is as far back as the 1800s at mm -hmm. least. So They used to call them alligator pears, but they were still... left to enjoy these weird and wonderful foods as the stream is coming to an end. Thank you, Hannah. For Thank the, you. It's so weird when someone else note. is on the other side of reminders. I'm like, wait, But also the that... reminder is super great to get. Yeah. 
Uh, so we got some sardines. We got some salmon. Anyway, we're gonna. We got Sweet lots breads. of sandwiches. Sweetbreads got... are not desserts. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, Milwaukee, Milwaukee sandwiches. Uh, so then we have, you know, Shed talks bread. a little about how we should, what kind of bread we want, uh, how old your bread should be before you make a sandwich out of it, which apparently is a thing. Um, this book is very hard to show you all. Yeah. There we go. I'm fixing it. I can also zoom out more. We might want to zoom out a tad so that I can stay in this border, but not, um, I'll move out of the presets and just inch our way back out. So let's look at some of these. We're gonna get through all this lead content. Uh, we got rolled lettuce sandwiches. And then like, so we're gonna roll the bread in a cloth wrung out by cold water, cover closely with dry cloths. Yeah, Neo gets that is, um, the miniature books are surprisingly easy to read. Yeah, we have some that are smaller that are not easy to read, and then we have some that are smaller that are easy to read. I, the one thing I'll point to with this is it kind of throws back to some of the 19th century style of recipes in that it tells you stuff at the top, but it's not really telling you, like it doesn't, sometimes they give you an amount, but they're like, here's what you're gonna need, and then here's how you're gonna make it. Um, apparently with rolled uh -huh. lettuce sandwiches, we should use bread made with potatoes or potato yeast, or what we might call potato bread, yeah. which is certainly a thing today. So uh, giving you in, a list of ingredients, but not necessarily measurements. This one has measurements. We have two ounces of gelatin and a quart of chicken stock to make our aspic. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. We have a cheese sandwich. Cheese and anchovy cheese. And that cheese is grated mild cheese and Roquefort. So we're going straight into stinky cheese. Mm. Um, and then this one says to use this cheese sandwich. It says you can use graham or white bread. Graham bread is a specific throwback to pre-Kellogg era. Yeah, we don't you really do graham bread too much in America anymore. Uh, graham flour tends to be used for graham crackers uh, now in the U.S., but we got it's some just graham flour. Cheese and English walnut. Um, oh, here's that. and Neufchatel. Oh. Wow. Here's that chow paste. Yeah, so a ch chow is a very specific. So this is a half cup full of butter, one Dang. cup full of boiling water, one cup of flour, and three, three large or four small eggs. Bring water and butter to a boiling point, beat the flour into it. When the dough, turn page, so, turn page. So uh, the chow would be like chow chow? Which is like a, a relish. But this is different. This positive. is chow paste, which is basically just like almost sounds more like a, a, a shoe paste, a, oh. a shoe dough, because it's basically fla flour, water, and egg that you cook until it pulls yeah, away and bake. Yeah, that's chow chow though. Yeah, that's, it's, it's more like, I think it's chow, I think they're anglicizing shoe, the French oh. term. I think it's shoe paste. Uh, that would make so much I more sense. I have been watching too many baking shows lately, y'all. Um, <clears throat> We've got some club sandwiches. We got some chestnut and liver. Mm. I was not super familiar with shoe as as like a pastry uh, until um, because we don't use it a ton in the U.S. But um, it's the pastry that is used for cream puffs. Thank uh, you, so Neo. You, I need someone to enable my baking show habit. <laughs> if you've uh, ever had like. A, in the U.S., you can find uh, these, like in your grocer's freezer section, Belgian cream puffs. Yeah. The pastry that's on those, that is shoe. Eclair. It's also made for use for eclairs and a couple other things. But, yeah. Um, let's see. So, anyway, I just wanted to show this because it's fun. It's one of the smallest cookbooks in our collection. Um, and it's a cute little sandwich book. But I know we're winding down, so... What do you want to What do you want to say to people on our way out? I guess. I don't. I don't know. Um, do you have a preview for next week? Do you? I don't have anything with me to show off no. for next time. Um, but you might have something relevant. I don't know. Um, any World War Two on the home front? World War Two on the home front. Probably not. That's World War One. That's not either of those things. 
No. No, we I can don't. show the Wonder Bread I'll book. I'll just leave the Wonder Bread book there while you talk um, <laughs> whatever you want. There, I, I, thank you all very much for joining us today for um, another guest hosted episode of Archival Adventures with uh, special guest host Archivist Kira. I am hoping to bring on some additional guest hosts in the future, still in the planning and working out logistics of, of exactly how to make that work uh, and, and make everything function well. Um, so hopefully by the end of this coming uh, academic year, I will get at least one additional uh, guest host on for an episode. Um, more entertaining than the AI Libraries webinar, Ravenlock, I, I appreciate that. Also, uh, at some point, I'm probably going to need to watch a recording of that. Um, I was, I wanted to sign up and it, 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 it conflicted with this. So, um, <clears throat> there is no episode of Archival Adventures next week because I am finally taking a week off of work. And, um, so... No new episode next week, but in two weeks, on Wednesday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv slash VTUL Studios and twitch.tv slash Rogan27, um, I have a variety of collections all around the theme of World War II on the home front. Mm. Um, so ration books and scrap drives and things like that. Uh, from World War II era, and then in future, coming up on Archival Adventures, um, I was, I thought I might tell you what I think. I think I've tentatively agreed to return to your show in December with something. Maybe we'll do aspects um, for the holiday season. Probably, <laughs> we like to have you around for holiday. Also, I believe, um, the plan is just to have Kira come back at least once a semester. Yeah. Um, aha! I have found my schedule. Where Yay! I know a little bit about what I have planned. Oh, for future I lied. World, World War Two. World War Two. I had one thing. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you. Open the document. Plan? No, there is no plan. Plans. Oh, no, I don't really have any plans at all. I have nothing planned. Um, that's what I'm doing tomorrow. World War II on the home front coming up on the 23rd of August. August 30th will be something around high energy physics because that will be the final Wednesday of the month and we will continue with um, number seven in the high energy physics series. But I have yet to decide what. Um, and, and then we'll see. I have a list of things that have been requested or brought up as possible topics. Um, but yeah, the war between the Axis and the Allies looks Look, a lot different. Sandwiches bring everyone together. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, let me see where we're going to throw a raid. Um, and... 300 right. ways of making sandwiches. It brings everyone together. Gosh. There are lots of people on today. There is, of course, the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Oh, penguins! Penguin <gasps> so cute. We could do that. Um, Stephen Joyce, who we love to raid, is playing Venva. Um... Those are our two most common destinations. Um, we Destination done, penguin cam? We <laughs> haven't, we have not done um, Monterey Bay Aquarium in a while. So let's head over there for the penguin cam. Um, penguin cam. Please and do not make sandwiches out of penguins. No. Not that, Let's just that go enjoy great. the animals. Anyway, thank you all 
so very much for joining us today. I hope I see you again in two weeks for the next Archival Adventures at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, twitch.tv slash VTUL Studios or twitch.tv slash Rogan27. Um, feel free to reach out to us at... Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> At the contact information available at fact.lib.vt.edu. Um, if you have suggestions for the program, if you have topics that you'd like to see if we could cover in future programs, or if you have more questions about any of the things that we've shown on stream today. Um, hopefully, uh, we will see you again soon. Until we do, keep exploring history, everyone. Bye.